Hey, good day, folks. Hope everyone's doing good today. Uh, I'm back for another sit down talk type of video. And on this video, I'm going to be talking more about uh, more about my retirement plans. Uh, now, as far as what my retirement plans are, I'm going to be honest with you people. I don't really have any plans to retire, so to speak. Now, what the heck does that mean? Does it mean I'm, I'm going to work myself into the ground? Does it mean I'm going to work until the day I, I'm in my grave? Eh, no. Here's what I mean by retirement. I mean, here's what I mean by my, this, these are my retirement plans. I'm going to try to make it make sense to you folks. Because I want you guys to really take this in and to get something out of this video. You see, uh, my attitude about retirement is if I'm working in an occupation that I have, that I'm passionate about working, that I like working, and I'm also living a lifestyle to where you know, I like where I live, and the people who I choose to be around, obviously I like them, and that's not going to be too many because I'm not much of a people person. So I figure if I use uh, what the universe has blessed all of us with, called a uh, brain, I feel I can create myself a phenomenal life. Now, doesn't mean I'm gonna be, <clears throat> doesn't mean I'm gonna get rich. No, doesn't mean I'm gonna be driving fancy cars or any of that kind of stuff. No. And honestly, I would like to create this phenomenal life for myself, that includes staying where I'm at and not having to sell this house and move anywhere else. But, you know, I'm so sick and tired of the hamster wheel lifestyle. I'll just call it that. I'm just so sick and tired of going to work just to pay bills. And that's all I do is work, pay bills. And maybe I might have a day or two to where I can actually do what I desire to do. But even then, I can't because I still have to, you know, I have to cut the yard, clean the house. You know, and do other stuff around the house. And I, you know, and, and some people might call me immature for thinking like this, but I really don't care. And if I tell you guys the kind of work that I would desire to do, if I had to work a nine to five, some of y'all might call me a loser. Again, don't really care. And that kind of work is, is custodial work. I'm going to just tell you straight up. I mean, I love doing custodial work because for the most part, you work at your own pace. No one really is under your skin about nothing. You work by yourself. And to me, that's a perfect working situation for me. And the reason why I have kind of gotten away from custodial work was because I wanted to make better money. So I did other type of work. Work that I didn't necessarily like to do, but I did it because I wanted to make that extra dollar. And I'm to the point now where, you know, I have a little bit of money stashed away. My house is paid off. My vehicles are paid off because I don't drive new vehicles. I don't have any credit card debt. I don't really get into buying a bunch of new clothes. I buy older clothes from Goodwill, as I told you guys the other day on, my, on one of my previous videos. And I really don't have an issue living like that. And I'm to the point now where, you know, I'm, I'm 44 years old. Next month, I'll be 45. And I just don't care what anybody thinks. I just do not care. You don't like how my clothes look? Okay, well, good. Well, turn around and walk the other way. Don't really care what you think. Now, I mean, not that anybody really cares what anybody thinks when it comes to what's on their back or what they're driving, because most people don't give a shit. You know? We, you know, at the end of the day, I man, we all got lives to live. We all got things to worry about. The economy is getting tougher and tougher for many people. A lot of people are going broke. A lot of people are losing their cars. A lot of people are losing their houses. A lot of people are just losing their effing minds. 
I mean, like, when I'm on, like, in the morning time, when I be driving to work in, in the afternoon, when I drive home from work, you know, you got people driving 90 miles, 85, 90 miles an hour, and no, I'm not exaggerating, in a 55. And they're on my, and they're on my ass wondering, hey, man, what, what the hell are you doing? You know, how go faster. And I, and I refuse to do it. I refuse to drive fast because, A, I'm not trying to get a ticket. B, I love myself enough to not put myself in a situation to where, I, to where I'm going to hurt myself or hurt somebody else, and then that's going to come back on me. And if I injure the other person and I don't get hurt, I'm going to still feel bad because of what I did to the other person when it all could have been avoided. So, you know, I'm to the point where I'm going to live how I'm going to live. And whatever adjustments I have to make along the way to stay living how I want to live, I'm going to do. And I have came to a very hard reality. And I'm going to do my damnest to make sure this does not come a reality. But I have came to a very hard reality that, you know what? If I have to sell this very house I'm sitting in right now and downsize to something a lot smaller and go back to... Having a house that's a lot that, that's maybe a thousand like, I don't know maybe a eight hundred square feet sitting on maybe seven thousand square feet of land as opposed to being where I'm at now to where I'm sitting on about an acre of land and the house is uh, about sixteen hundred square feet. I mean I don't want to do it like that, but I've came to the hard reality that if I have to I will. If I have to I will because that's how. Desperately, I want to live how I want to live. That's how desperately that I want to live on my own terms. And I'm not trying to live. I'm not trying to be a robot no more. I'm not trying to be nobody's robot no more. Ultimately, I'm not trying to work a nine to five anymore. But even during the times where I might have to work a nine to five, because I'm, I'm, you know, I try to be realistic now. So even if I ever had to work a nine to five, why not do work that I want to do? Why work work that I really don't want to do and I really have little to no passion in doing and then I'm miserable all day. And then when I get home, I make myself feel better by eating a bunch of junk food and, you know, and, you know, I don't drink or smoke or nothing like that, but I do admit I tend to eat way too many sweets. So to me, you know, that none of that none of that shit makes any sense. You got a lot of people that are going to work and, you know, they're fatigued all the time because they're having to work multiple jobs. And like at my job, we had a safety meeting and it's interesting that we were talk that the supervisor was talking about work fatigue and I'm like, man, please, man, don't wanna talk about fatigue, man, that's a joke. But, you know, they, I mean, my supervisor was talking about fatigue. And then there were employees asking about, can can the, you know, because, like, where I work, they're going to have a Gatorade club to where, because since it's getting ready to be hot and we work at a warehouse, they're going to have Gatorade to keep us hydrated, which, that's a joke, because Gatorade has got way really too much damn sugar to, for anybody to stay hydrated. You're better off of drinking regular water. But someone asked about, can they have a monster club drink, um, a monster uh, club type of deal, or a Red Bull? Or can they, I mean, they're asking about, you know, the company providing monsters and Red Bulls. And then there was another worker that, you know, they bring in their own energy drink, which if you drink that kind of stuff, you need to stop drinking that kind of stuff because one day you're going to drink it. And hopefully nothing ever happens to you, but <laughs> there's been people that I know that drunk that crap and, you know, they've had, they've had a heart attack and then never came back. Uh, I mean, there's a, let's see, so let's see what else. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't do the energy drinks. My attitude is between getting at least seven hours of rest every night. Waking up, drinking just regular old coffee with a little bit of cream and sugar in it. 
and eating a somewhat of a balanced diet and staying hydrated throughout the day, if that's not enough for me to stay energized, then I need to do one of two things. A, I should probably go to I should probably go see a doctor and see what the hell is going on and see what nutrients I'm missing because I'm too young to be tired all the time. If that were to be the case, but for me it's not. Two, eh, maybe I might want to look at my workload and change that up a little bit. But under no circumstances am I going to put all that poison in my body just so I stay energized to work a job that I don't like. No, no thank you. You got me, man, you got me messed up on that one all day. So anyhow, you know, when it comes to retirement, my attitude is, I'm going to just, I'm going to, you know, rather than focus, rather than working a job I don't like because it pays X amount of money and then focusing on retirement, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to still continue to be financially responsible. I'm going to still continue to put money away on a regular basis in mutual funds and Roth IRA. I'm going to still continue to do, to do that. I've been doing that for the last uh, several years. I'm going to still continue to, to, to do that. And honestly, when it comes to my housing expense, exp I mean, when it comes to my overall housing expenses here, I feel where I'm living is about, I, I feel my housing setup, rather, is about as low as it's going to get. The only thing that I can think that would be cheaper for me is to maybe buy a smaller house. Utilities might be a little lower. But honestly, it ain't going to be enough for me to, for, for, for any, it's not going to be enough to where it's going to make a difference. So the only reason why I would sell this house and move elsewhere is to move somewhere to where maybe the economy is a little stronger, to where there'll be more job varieties at higher wages. If I had to do that. I don't want to move here. I, I mean, I don't want to move away from here. I like the house. I like where I'm at. I do not want to move. Moving is expensive and it's a pain in the ass. But in order for me to live how I desire to live my life, if I had to make a sacrifice, the sacrifice that I would make would be to sell this house and move somewhere else. <laughs> To where, you know, and have, you know, have a smaller house and all that kind of stuff. And again, I don't want to. But I'm so fed up with myself for for not thinking about all this when I was younger. In terms of creating a life that I desire to live. Rather than just simply working and uh, maybe you know, one day when I turn 60, whatever, whatever. I, I can retire and enjoy life then. No, I'm going to enjoy life today when I'm 44. I'm already until I'm 60, whatever. I'm enjoying my life today. So, uh, let's see what else. So, yeah, that's just what I think. And part of the reason why I think the way I think, and as I get older, this thought process is, uh, what's the word? As I get older, this thought process is, I mean, I'm just, I mean, as I get older, I'm willing to do more and more to live how I want to live, if that makes any sense. I don't have the proper wording right now. My apologies. Because, like, I have a, you know, now, I grew up in a family of four. We were all adopted. Now, my oldest sister, you know, she, you know, we were fairly close, you know, me and her were 10 years apart. Now, she passed away back in 2004 of, 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 of brain cancer. She, she passed away at 36 years of age. 36 years. That's all she got to live on this earth was, was 36 years. Now, during her short life, I mean, she had a job working for the city of Cleveland as a Cleveland dispatcher. And she hated her job. She despised her job. She only kept her job because the money was good. And the benefits were good. But other than that, she hated her job. And she, were, and she regularly would come home crying about how she hated her job. 
And some of us were thinking, okay, well, maybe her tumor developed, I mean, her cancer grew because, I mean, now granted, her diet wasn't the greatest, but typically when you're, when you're under stress all the time, your, the, the chemistry of your body changes and not for the, and not for the best. So me and my mom were thinking, you know, maybe the reason why she developed her brain cancer was because of the fact that she was always stressed out because he hated her job. And of course, she had a spending issue. She was always in debt. But she loved to travel. In fact, this this woman didn't travel all over the world. She done been to different uh, countries in the continent of Africa. She done been all over the United States, all over Canada, all over, all over Central and South America. She done been to... Europe, she done been damn near everywhere. And, you know, in 2003, in fall 2003, I think, she, no, no, yeah. Yeah, in fall 2003, she went to Puerto Rico for about a couple of weeks to visit her biological family that she discovered. And then when she got back home from her trip to Puerto Rico, you know, we were, you know, we were talking and, and she had a good time and everything at Puerto, in Puerto Rico. She was telling me how things were there. And, and I said, man, I want to go one day. And, I'm, and I still do want to go. And I will go eventually. I don't know when. But she was telling me about Puerto Rico. And then it was like maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. And finally, you know, she fell asleep. And I went upstairs to my apartment and went to bed because at the time we were living in a duplex. She lived downstairs. I, was, I lived upstairs. And uh, the next morning, uh, I woke up. You know, I woke up and uh, just started doing what I do in the morning time. I woke up and ate breakfast, watched a little television. And then my sister, you know, then my sister called me and, you know, she told me she felt sick. So I'm thinking, okay, well, she's feeling sick. Why is she telling me? Ain't nothing I can do. I ain't no doctor. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what's going on? And then she's like, well, can you take me to the hospital? And I said, okay. So I got my keys and, you know, I mean, at this time it was a little cool outside. So I got my keys, grabbed a jacket. And I was like, all right, come on, let's go to the hospital. <laughs> so I looked at her, and I was like, man, okay, you're, you're, not, you're not looking too good. So, okay, anyhow, I took her to the hospital, and then I went back home and finished my morning. And then in the afternoon, I left to go to work. Because my mom was going to pick her up and take her back home or Either my mom was going to pick her up or her good friend was going to pick her up. So anyhow, I'm at work. And at the time, I was working as a parking lot attendant. So she gives me a call. My sister gives me a call. And we talk for maybe about 10 minutes. And I asked her, well, what's going on? What did the doctor tell you? And then she started crying and said, well, the doctor said I had cancer. And I'm going to have to undergo surgery to get it removed. So I was like, no, okay, that's crazy. That's wild. So at this point, I'm still thinking, okay, they're going to get it removed. They're going to do what they do, and she's going to be all right. I was thinking that, and I think down deep she was hoping that. Well, make a long story short, they, you know, a week after the, her initial visit to the hospital, she got her surgery done. They removed all the cancer successfully. And after that, she had to undergo chemo. Now, I would say maybe two weeks after they first removed all the cancer, they, you know, she started feeling bad again. She started getting headaches again. So she went back to the hospital just to discover that all her cancer has grown back. And at that point, the doctors have told my parents that she only had two weeks to live. And sure enough, within those two weeks, she was out of here. Now, during the time, now this was like maybe, now 
this was like maybe about a month after, a month and a half, give or take, after she first went to the hospital. And at this point, I have left Cleveland and I have relocated down to Louisville, Kentucky. So I get a call from my mom. It, I mean, I was, I, I mean, it's like in the morning time. I woke up, I went to the record store, and right when I was just walking in the door from the record store, because no, back in, now this was in early 2004. Uh, back when, you know, if you wanted to listen to some, some music, some music, <laughs> you can still go to your local record store and buy what they call CDs, compact disc. Yeah, I'm old as fuck, I know. But anyways. So I got back from the record store and my phone was ringing. <clears throat> and by the way, this was before it, it this was before cell phones even became a thing. Now, I mean they were out, but it wasn't really a thing for everybody to carry one. So my phone rung. I had a landline. So I answered my phone. And there's my mom. So like, oh, what's going on, mom? And she's like, well, your sister passed away this morning. So, okay, at that point, I let my employer know that I was going to be out for a few days because I had to drop, go up, up back up to Ohio to attend my sister's funeral. So, after, and then I want to say, uh, I want to say eight years after my sister passed away, my mom and my dad were on their 50th anniversary. They were on their way to I want so they're on their way to Las Vegas, I believe. But in New Mexico, my mom had a, a heart attack on the train ride. So they had to take her to the hospital in, in Albuquerque and she passed away at the Albuquerque She passed away at the Albuquerque Hospital. Uh, and I was, and, and at first I thought, okay, I was going to fly down there, get to say my last words or whatever, but nah. By the time I got down there, uh, she was already gone. I mean, my, I was there, my dad was there, my brother was there. So my mom at that point was already gone. And from 2000 and, uh, and what was it? From 2012 all the way to 2020, the year my dad done passed away. No, it was 2021, the year my dad done passed away. So my mom, she passed away at 73, my dad at 84. See, now, before my mom got, before my mom passed away, remind you. Now, my mom, let's talk about my mom for a minute. My mom, she was a health nut. I mean, before she had her heart attack, she walked three miles a day with two big dogs. She had a husky and uh, she had a husky and a German shepherd. She walked three miles a day with them. So she was a health nut and still passed away at 73. She only weighed 125 pounds. Now, from the day my mom passed away, to the day my dad passed away, for those eight years, my well, for nine years, my dad mourned over my mom's death. Now, before my mom passed away, my dad, he had a few issues, not anything major. There were issues that were normal for people that were in their 70s. But I remind you, my dad and my mom renovated a whole entire house together. Before they took their trip to, before they took their trip out west. So that's just to illustrate how healthy they were. And how with it and alert they were. In fact, my before my mom passed away, my dad was the type of man to take regular trips across the country. Just to illustrate how healthy my dad was and how with it he was. When my mom passed away, we, me, my brother, and my other sister, we slowly, he, we slowly saw his health deteriorate. And then it got to the point where it was speeding up, his deterioration of his health. 
I mean, it got it got so bad that you know he quit brushing his teeth, he quit taking showers, and there is nothing any that any one of us could do for him. So we had to make the unfortunate decision and to admit him to a nursing home because, you know, there is nothing any of us could do. He wouldn't listen to nobody. So, you know, we admitted him to a nursing home, and of course, my brother would check in on him on a regular basis because. The nursing home was close, was right down the street from his house. Well, finally in 2020, my dad, you know, my dad's health is very weak. It was very bad. And in fact, I remember I called him up on Thanksgiving to wish him a happy Thanksgiving. Because I was, at this point, I was down in the Florida Keys. And I wanted to give him a call and see how he was doing. And it was so bad that. I mean, my dad couldn't even talk. He couldn't, he couldn't hold a conversation. That's how bad it's gotten. And then I want to say maybe a few months after that, in early 2021, is when he passed away. And then I had to drive up uh, from Indiana to Ohio so we can deal with his funeral. But... And finally, my dad passed away of, of 19. That's what took him out finally. So I say all this because life is short. Life is precious. And none of us really knows how many days on this earth that we got left. I'm hoping that the good old universe blesses me with a very long life to where I can be like one of these people that live to be in the hundreds and still healthy, still kicking, still going. I mean, my foster mother, she's 91. No, yeah, she's 90. Yeah, yeah she's 90. Hold on, she's like 92. I'm sorry, she's 92. She still drives. She's still alert. She still walks around. And she's still very sharp. And I'm hoping that the universe will bless me like that. But my point of this video is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste any more of my time planning for a so called retirement. I'm gonna start today right now planning my entire life to where my entire life will be a vacation. And if retirement is a good thing, if retirement is a blessing, I'm gonna plan my life starting today at age forty four. To where my whole entire life will be a retirement plan, not just a, not just the last ten or fifteen or maybe twenty years if you're lucky, and then your health goes out or you're in the or you're, or you're sitting in the casket. And, and no, that's so yeah. I mean, I know I've been all over the place, but it is what it is. When I do these kind of videos, I don't have a script. I just talk off the cuff. I speak from the heart. But anyways. After I've seen people in my family pass away like that, I'm sorry. I just cannot accept continuing to work and plan for a so-called retirement. I cannot accept to live my life for my employer. I'm going to live my life how I live my life. And whoever I choose to have, if I have to work a 9 to 5, I'm going to choose an employer to where... I can still live on my terms, so to speak. So this ain't one of those, I'm not one of these kind of people that I want to check out society, money's nothing to me, no. I'm, 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 you know, I'm a lot more of a realist than that. However, it doesn't mean that I have to be a robot. It doesn't mean that I have to work my life away and then one day when I get to enjoy my life, I'm old and I can't do shit for myself. No, thank you. And I do believe the universe does speak to does speak to us in different ways. I do believe that. I, I really do believe that. Sometimes we have to accept. Sometimes we have to listen. If you want to live a better life, sometimes we need to listen to what the universe tells us. And I do believe that. 
And that's why, even though I don't want to, and I'm gonna do everything in my, I'm gonna do everything humanly possible to prevent this from having to happen. But I am prepared to sell this house and to move elsewhere if I have to in order to live how I want to live my life. Because, you know, to me, this house, it's a house, it's a home. Yes, I love it. I appreciate it. But but at the end of the day, I'm not going to allow it to cripple my ability to live how I want to live and to be and, and to therefore be healthy. And I don't think I'm going to have to sell this house. I think I'll be able to get out here and do good things and, and make the money I need to make and everything going to be good. But I'm just saying, just in case, in the back of my mind, just in case I'm prepared to do what I do. And there's more I could probably say if I sit around and I think hard enough. But you know what? This video is already over 31 minutes. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. You got something out of it. Feel free to drop comments in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. And if you want to support me, you can just give videos like this a thumbs up. Stay blessed. Catch you guys on the next one.